Let's talk about custom state variables. In this video, we're going to go through this outline. You're going to learn everything that there is to know about custom state variables, when to use them, when not to use them, and how to use them. Let's start out this video by taking a look actually over at the bubble manual. If you don't know about this resource, it is really, really amazing to be using uh, during your learning journey with bubble because it's straight from the horse's mouth. So let's take a look at what it's saying here about custom states. Cause we're going to look at first, like what are custom states? Then we'll look at when to use them. And we're going to just go deeper and deeper into the discussion. So, First and foremost, just a couple properties. You can read this whole list, but I'm just gonna point out a few, is that one, they're a lot faster than reading and writing to the database and they're stored on the browser, which means because the browser has this kind of temporary area, think of it about RAM and you know storage, just like the computer. The browser is like RAM, the database is like storage, which you can do a lot more, but it's not as fast as the RAM. Um, other things to know about them, they can hold all different types of data. So from numbers, text, list of things, even all of the data types that you create, it's available to be used as a tool to hold all of those. Um, let's go ahead then and think about when this tool might actually be pretty helpful to us. Well, first and foremost, tracking user interfaces. I'll give two examples right now. Number one, a very simple Woho tab menu. If you know you had something like this and there were three different options, clicking on one of those, if you'd set the workflow, which we'll get into, we'll see how to set, well, to create and set state variables. We'll see uh, that process, you know, does it really matter if somebody reloads the page if they're taken back to the first tab? Not really, um, you know, unless they were doing something really data intensive or something on another tab. But typically speaking, let's just say they were, you know, one of these was a shopping cart, one of these was all the things you could buy, and one of these things was all the things on sale, right? And they're just kind of browsing through and you're saving the shopping cart when they add things to it. Uh, but okay, so so tab menus are a great use for that. Here in this conversational panel, I'm just gonna show off actually the back end and make a quick plug that down below in this video description, this uh, whole interface, and especially if you're here wondering about what custom states are, this is like a crash course in learning how to build Bubble. In two hours and 45 minutes, we build this entire interface and chat and database and all this stuff. But I just want to show off here. So if you haven't seen this for where to go and build custom states, basically on any group, um, wherever you're doing the work, or either at either there or sometimes the top level of page just to keep things organized and where stuff is. Those are good places to make a custom state on this top right icon of the property settings panel here. You see that this little info thing and we can click add a new custom state. Notice how this is just like any other bubble data field that you might be adding, right? Like it's, uh, hope it's all coming together. And also I would imagine most folks here are uh, in more of the beginner side for given the content of this, but it's also just great to get it, you know, straight what is going on here when it comes to uh, custom states. So this is this is great for anyone really. Uh, but you can see here that I've, that I've created one and this is called the selected cell and it's a number and it just basically tracks, you know, which one have we selected. And each time we click on one of these, you can imagine there's a workflow that says, Hey, we just clicked on the second one, put two there, right? And when it's two there, then it takes number two's conversation in this list and displays it over here. So, uh, that is, that is uh, tracking in tab, tab menus and side menus type of things, user interaction basically. All right, next up, storing temporary data. Where is this useful? Well, there are some cases where you're pulling stuff onto the page and there's so much data. I'll give an example of this. So this is a, a integration at this point where in the process here, someone is integrating something where they're pulling a list of a bunch of things in, but maybe they don't want everything. So all of this stuff can just sit there as in a state variable once it's pulled in, and then you can decide, you know, when it's selected or whatever. It just basically 
any working data on a page, and there's multiple ways to do this. If somebody is at a level where you know that some from some APIs, you can pull in data directly into repeating groups, or you can make an API call, store it in a custom state, and then display it here, whatever really one is most comfortable with. Um, but the point is temporary working data. Then when it's finalized, it can go over to the database uh, because the user expects certain speeds, you know, and then if they click something, they do also expect like, okay, it's doing its thing. And then last up, yeah, faster performance when it's not essential to send to the database, because as mentioned here, it is much faster than reading and writing to the database since it's done on the browser. So basically, you know, you wouldn't want to update a tab menu um, to belabor that point for tabs. You wouldn't want to update one of those with a uh, a value on in the database. It's just much quicker to do it there. So really, um, that takes us through this first section here. Now let's look at how to use them. So if we head over to the back end of our bubble editor here, we're going to see this process where we're going to create, we're going to assign a value, and we're not really going to discard or save permanently because that is, you know, if we had some data, maybe maybe we would, but I'll, we'll get into it. So first and foremost, let's go and see how we can create these. Now, what I'm going to do here is I have a couple panels and we have what is essentially kind of like a tab menu. It is... Basically, this menu, when each one of these is selected, each one of these will show. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go on to this top level area of the page and we're going to do create a new custom state. And we're just going to say, and we could do a couple things here. We could set this as an option set where it would be, and we could make the option set for those familiar with this term, home, classes, library, people, or if it's something as simple as this, I'm okay to do it, making it one, two, three, four, which, you know, it's really just a preferential choice at this point. So we're just gonna call it this menu state. I think I called it something different, but we'll just roll with this. We're gonna go number, and the default value of it, we're gonna say is one. Then, when we hit this, now we have seen how to create it, and let's see how to assign it a value. So I'm gonna say, set the state of an element, and that is on this mobile demo. So we can go, this is why I say when you organize things, you could either organize it at the top or where you're working. One of those um, spots, basically an easy, whatever works for you as an easier to remember way. We'll select this, and then we're gonna assign this the value, in this case of, well, when we're clicking home, it's gonna be one. And then we can just copy, paste this in a couple times. Okay, so we have group home, but what other groups do we have? Well, we have multiple group classes. So that, well, you can see the helpful thing there where group library and group profile. So you can see here that when I'm hovering over it, there's the naming is not the greatest in this one, but now uh, because they have similar names, but that's a way to go around it. So we can see that home is one, class is two, library three, profile four. So here under classes, I'm gonna set this as two. Library, I'm gonna set this as three. Profile, I'm gonna set this as four. Okay, so now that I've done what, again, this custom state variable, it's sitting there in the browser, it's been updated when somebody clicks one of these, and then now I'm just gonna go in and add a conditional to these so that they display, because right now, they are collapsed when hidden. They're not visible on page load. Let's make them visible when one of those is clicked. The corresponding one is clicked. So starting here with the group home, I'm going to navigate on the conditionals. Tab above the property settings panel, I'm going to define a new condition. And the condition, I'm going to say that this, I'm going to say when the uh, mobile demos, and here again is finding the state, when it is one, then I want this element to be visible. Now I can also do something quick here where I'll just say copy special, copy conditional expressions, and then I'll turn these on and I will grab each of these and then I'll do a paste conditional expressions and it goes classes is two, library is three, 
and profile is four. Okay, so let's go see that in action now. It's not exactly the most mobile friendly in this case, but we can see here that when we click these, the state variable is getting updated and that is changing these things. And if we look back here, we can ask questions now. So getting out of part two here and into part three, the helpful questions are, does it really matter uh, if we lose this data? We'll just start with number C here. It, it, it kind of, it kind of doesn't, does it? Uh, if somebody leaves this app and they come back to it, it's just perfectly normal experience for someone to go back to where it is uh, that's the start of the app. And to look at these additional helpful questions that we have here, things you can ask, and they're kind of all similar. How long do we need this data for? Will, we, will this data ever be used later? Is the data sensitive or confidential? And basically, if the answer is yes, or if the answer is, sorry, if the answer is it's not, it's temporary data, we won't use it later, we don't really need to save it, then the answer is yes, we can use a state variable. If it is the data is sensitive and confidential, like for example, you know, you're storing some password value or something like that, uh, don't, don't do that. Uh, anything that's, that's confidential, it can be seen on the front end um, in terms of if somebody knows how to analyze what's going on on a page and if somebody else had something connected to that person's browser they didn't know it was on there that's you know conversation for another day um but it's not a great idea to use because things on the front end are not really that secure versus where they're in more in a vault on the back end with privacy rules blocking them and okay so we have crushed this whole video we've cruised through this here i hope you found uh, a good amount of value and maybe a little bit more deeper understanding in just terms of where you're at and your level of comfort with custom state variables last thing on here is that i did mention under this how to use area is the discard or save permanently obviously uh, in our example here with the tab menus that's not something you would do but if you were playing around with um For example, back to this example where we're like doing a little bit of filtering on the data that's here, deciding which ones uh, proceed to the next step and which ones get left behind, then it's perfectly reasonable to discard some of them and save some of them permanently, you know, once out, out of the state variable. And there's a selection process that goes into it, which we won't get into here, but the general principle is there in terms of what uh, these custom state variables are useful for. I hope you found a lot of value from that. If you did and you want to dive deeper into custom state variables, like I mentioned, check out the seven day learn bubble challenge below in the description. Also, there's going to be a list of other videos where I use custom state variables to um, they're, they're, they're used so much. I almost forgot to make a video about them on the channel here because they're just so bread and butter to certain aspects of development. So I'll leave a list of videos that have this custom state variable used in it as a, in the build of different features as a tool. And you're welcome to check out for further investigation. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.